So let's take a look at the brand new Imperial Navy data sheet that can be fielded by any Imperial faction and see how they stack up in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing a quick overview of the Imperial Navy Breacher Team, a kit that's come out fairly recently for Kill Team, and now Games Workshop have provided us with a 40k datasheet to allow them to be used as an ally to Imperial armies, and put these rather new snazzy Void Armoured miniatures on the board. It is always kind of interesting when Games Workshop gives us a datasheet that has the Agents of the Imperium keyword, it means they could potentially be used by just about any Imperial faction. Though I must admit, with the points costs and the stats for these guys, I can't really see them being particularly competitive to put on the table, and feel like they're going to be a bit more in the fun and fluffy miniature category. Perhaps the thing that I find the most amusing about them though, is that they're stealing the Void Armour right back from the Votan, it seems they have an equivalent of their own. So here we have the datasheet for the Imperial Navy Breacher Team for Warhammer 40k. These are a rather cool little mini faction for the Imperium, basically representing the Imperial Navy in space and their militant wing that might need to take up arms if the enemy is trying to board their space vessels. They do pretty much fit the bill of Space Marine even better than the Space Marines do potentially. And these guys are a heavily armoured breacher team with things like shields and shotguns. They look to be specialists in close quarter fighting. The way that you feel these guys is that they're agents of the Imperium, so they can be taken as a detachment slot within another Imperial detachment and not break special rules, things like chapter tactics, combat doctrines, or faction unique secondaries. In theory, if you just wanted to throw these guys into, say, a Space Marine army or something, then you certainly could, though they do have a special rule which means that you can't take them as a mandatory troop slot so they can't fill detachments and things. This will make them feel a lot more like an add-on rather than a core part of the force. Still, though, it does mean that if you just want to put the miniatures on the table, it's relatively simple too rules-wise. In terms of the squad itself, you get 10 Navis Armsmen, they cost 11 points per model basically, the main squad costs 110 points, though that does include a few fun bits of gear for free. We'll go through their war gear in detail in a second, but the vast majority of the models are armed with a Navis shotgun, an 18 inch two shot weapon with strength 4 AP0, though one of them gets a Navis las volley, and one gets a Navis heavy shotgun and an endurance shield for free. The only bits that actually cost more are if they take a plasma gun or melter gun or a demolition charge. Their stat line is perhaps fairly unassuming. They move 6 inches and hit on 4s, a strength and toughness 3, 1 wound and 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 plus save. And I must admit I do find it quite amusing that they have void armour as well, the same as the leagues of Votan. Basically the same as Space Marine Armour of Contempt, worsening the AP of an attack by 1. So if you get hit by an AP2 thing, they'll still get a 5 plus save, for example. They don't seem to have the full void armor things that the Votan have. They don't turn off wound rerolls or anything. Otherwise, in terms of keywords, they have the Navis Imperialis keyword. That seems to be one that they share with the rogue traders, so they can actually have some synergy with rogue traders who might be manning their vessels, maybe. And I'm hoping to cover those guys shortly in another video. Otherwise, they are infantry with a core keyword. An agent of the Imperium, the thing that allows them to go into other detachments and not mess with the rest of your army's rules. In terms of war gear, they do get quite a lot of fun and fancy choices. The shotguns are fairly typical anti-infantry small arms, but they do have some fun stuff. The last volley basically looks like a man-portable multi-laser with an extra pip of AP. Heavy 4 shots, strength 6, AP-1 and damage 1, and a 24 inch range. Quite a nice gun to have included stock, though it will likely be a bit inaccurate if it's moving about. You also get a guy with the awesome shotgun and endurance shield included. That one counts as a heavy shotgun apparently, where you get 4 shots rather than 2. And the endurance shield also makes him a bit tankier as well, giving that model a 5 plus inbuilt save and plus 1 to the saving throws. Though to be honest you probably don't want to be taking shots on him anyway, seeing as he's got a lot more firepower than most of them. Otherwise you can swap out the sergeant's shotgun for a bolt pistol and power sword, which kind of makes sense seeing as it's free. The las volley could be replaced with a plasma gun or melter gun for plus 5 points, but I think seeing as the last volley is free, you may as well just stick with that one. A couple of the random armsmen can take some combat weapons, one can take an auto pistol and power axe, and one can take an auto pistol and chain fist. Again, both of those are free, but seeing as they only get one attack base, it is a bit of a side grade really. You might well just be better off sticking off with a shotgun and contributing to the mass small arms fire. Finally, it looks like you can equip one with a whole bunch of grenades and things, if you pay 10 points, then he gets a demolition charge for a great big D6 shots at strength 8, AP3, damage 2, up close. 
and he also gets smoke grenades as well to get the smoke screen keyword that could give them a minus one against shooting if you pay a CP. I think seeing as they're already at least fairly pricey for 10 guard equivalent models then I probably just want to keep them at the 110 points. It doesn't immediately look like there's any really obvious way of delivering that demo charge into range so I probably wouldn't bother with that. Still though out of the unit you can get a whole flurry of shotgun shots, a power sword on the sergeant, the last volley and the heavy shotgun all included. Kind of a shame that they didn't have any special rules for that little remote control cat thing or the servo skull. I thought they actually did quite well with the Orc Commandos datasheet to include those. They had a fun distraction grot. I can't help but think that, say, you could have had an upgrade to include the cat and give the unit ignores cover or something, or once per game action of some sort that made them better. I guess those models just were a bit of extra flavour, and mainly useful just if you're using them in Kill Team. In terms of how useful they'll be in game, as I said, I am a little bit unconvinced really. As core stats go, they aren't truly terrible. They get a bit of light infantry fire okay armour, and a couple of special weapons included at no extra cost, but unlike say the other Imperial troops of similar cost, like say Skitari or Sisters of Battle and Power Armour, they don't have a whole codex worth of buffs backing them up and making them more efficient or useful. They also maybe are in a bit of an awkward spot having fairly close range weapons, but not being particularly tough for the points or even that fast to get there, which maybe makes them feel a bit inflexible. For other similar units in the past, they've often been kind of useful if they could just be really small units to sit around doing actions and things, but 110 points they aren't even all that cheap. Even for more elite armies like Space Marines and things, you could easily get an entire squad of Space Marines that still cost less than this, so it's not like you're winning any big victories there either. Overall, I would just conclude that they're generally quite a weak datasheet, they're not really going to be making the rounds in any sort of competitive list, and are a lot more of a fun and fluffy type choice for if you just happen to have painted up the models maybe as part of Kill Team or something, or because you like them, and you wanted to put them on the table with some workable rules. To be honest, I'm not sure if that's necessarily the worst thing for these sort of any army options though. It would be kind of weird if they were just super ridiculously strong, and then every single army out there decided to pick up a unit of breaches. It would be a bit strange to see a unit of these guys fighting alongside everything from Space Marines to Guardsmen. So perhaps just for keeping armies looking a bit less weird, it's maybe not the worst that their rules are a little bit on the niche side. Still though, very cool models, you could certainly run them as something like Guard Veterans as an alternative if you play Astra Militarum, and I think it is pretty good that Games Workshop actually made the efforts to give them 40k rules, even if they're not super duper optimised or anything. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the 40k rules for these guys. If you happen to have picked up any of these out of Into the Dark, would you be at all tempted to put them on the table for 40k? in a competitive or casual setting. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, I'll certainly be covering the other Kill Team datasheets that Games Workshops come out with, so feel free to subscribe to the channel or check back later if you'd like to see those. If you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics has a Patreon page as well, which is how I can afford to keep on making quite so many videos like this quite so often. If you are enjoying quite a bit then any support is enormously appreciated, Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.